Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to look at all of my fountain pens. So stick around. As you might know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I am a big fan of Peter Draws, one of the many art YouTubers that I love. And he did a video a long time ago, years ago, three years ago, where he reviewed two fountain pens that he got in the mail. This Noodler's Ahab and this Caveco Sport. And just his review of these two pens, and he has a billion reviews since then, but his review of these two pens made me super interested in using fountain pens for my art. And as a result, <laughs> I went a little nuts as a do. As you know by now, I do. I'm a big art hauler. And I just basically tried every single pen that looked good to me. And this is probably it. I've kind of stopped. I was bitten by the fountain pen shopping bug, obviously. <laughs> and I've kind of calmed down. I feel like I have everything that I need. Obviously, something might come out that I'm interested in, in which case I would check it out. But I find reviewing what you have and doing inventories like this and just playing with what you have helps fight that shopping bug. I wanted to give that tip. That's really the only tip that has helped me when I needed to take a shopping break is doing things like this. So I'm going to do it for you here and maybe you'll be inspired to do it for yourself. So this is one of my notebooks. I love Dingbats. The Dingbats notebook brand is vegan leather and it's just so pretty. And for me, it's just tactile. This is one of the ones that I usually get. I've got the deer. This is the whale Dingbats. And this one feels more leathery. I like both. They're just two different lines. And it's just really cool. They do this special like wallpaper for the inside. So this is the paper that I like best for my fountain pens. And that's what I'm going to use here today. It's just very smooth and the fountain pens work really well in here. And that's where I use my fountain pens the most. This is a, I think, nylon case. And this is what I keep my fountain pens in. It says designed for arrangement. I got it on Amazon and I'll just leave a link down below. It was super cheap and it fits a billion pens. Basically what happens is the ones that aren't super active live in here. And then the ones that I sketch with, like if I'm, t I rotate my pens. So I like to have three to four actively journaling at a time. Some that I take notes with for work. This one is actually dedicated to notes. I leave my husband a little love note every night and he leaves me one every night. And we've been doing it for a long time and it's really fun. It's like journaling to each other basically. So this one lives by our journal. These are sketching pens that have permanent black ink in them. These are ones that I journal with or take work notes in and this one lives in my purse. And then I just rotate these with these. And that's how I do, that's how I use all my pens. I feel like that's going to be a question. Might as well answer it right away. That's how I use all of these pens. So let me start with my sketching pens because that's just boring black ink and the rest of these, to the extent they have ink in them already, they have colorful fun inks. So let me start with the boring black inks. <laughs> This is the one you've probably seen on my channel the most. It's a very affordable pen. It's called a Jin Hao 992 for maybe $10 on eBay. I think it came with six for 10 on eBay. And I, I decided I would put the boring, quote unquote, boring black ink in the green one. And I ended up just keeping the green one. The other ones got given away. I love the way this writes. The blue one was definitely the prettiest. The ice blue was the prettiest looking pen. I wish I'd kept that one. But it just made a really good gift. So this is the Jin Ho 992. It has a fine nib. There's a little F right there. There you go. You can kind of see that. There's a little F. So this is a fine nib. And it has... Platinum Carbon ink in it. So let's just give you a little view. Okay. And that's how I'll test all of these, is I'll give you this sort of look at how they write. There's a bird just absolutely losing its mind outside, so I hope that you're not hearing that and getting distracted. But this is a Sailor Lacool. It is really cute. I think this one was just under 40. It was like $38. You see it says Sailor Japan. And this is a medium fine. See the MF? And a Sailor is extremely fine. So 
So even though that's a medium fine and that's a fine, I feel like this is thinner, a thinner line than that. There's going to be some, uh, what do they call it? ASMR, AMSR, ASMR <laughs> to this with just the sound. And that's okay. Enjoy. <laughs> Again, this is all going to be that platinum carbon ink. I did a whole review on these two in my affordable art haul. These are two extremely affordable pens that I got on Amazon. This is another sailor because this is a Fude or Bent Nib pen. And this one is a 55 degree angle. I'm sorry, it's not really great for writing because you have to sort of angle it differently to use it well. And it takes some skill. You just have to practice with it. But once you do, man, is this fun for sketching because you can get so many different line widths. And you can fill in big areas. Look at that. Look how fast that filled that in. So I love this one. I leave it at my desk. It's also super long. It's extra long compared to a normal pen. And so it, it feels like a brush. It's really cool. And it's only 11 bucks. I highly recommend that one. And there's the writing. This is a Hong Dian. And I, I believe it's called Light of Hope. This is the like lemony greeny one. I'll be linking these below, but this is a another bent nib. So it does the same thing the sailor does. It's easier to write with, but it's less fun to sketch with than the sailor for me. But they both kind of do the same thing. So you're really going to be happy with either one. And this one came with this little velvet holder. So I just put it in there and I leave it in my purse and I have a sketching pen wherever I go. And that one was $14 when I got it, the Hong Dian. This is my first Moon Man that I'm going to be showing you. I have a lot of them because I really like this brand. They actually got in a fight with Caveco and they had to rename themselves something else. But when you search for Moon Man Mini. That's one of the ones that'll come up. This is the green swirl. I just think it's such a pretty, ooh, <laughs> such a pretty pattern. It's a beautiful pen and it was like under 15 bucks and it, it is sturdy. I do drop it sometimes and it's pretty sturdy. So the way that this one works, it's a mini. So it's teeny tiny. Look at it. Ooh, look at it compared to a regular pen, right? It's literally half the size. And all you do is you screw the top off and you screw it onto the end and you have a normal size pen. Very comfortable in my hand and I'm almost six feet tall. So I'm a pretty tall lady and <laughs> it's very comfortable in my hand. So this is a Moon Man Mini. This has navy blue, it's called Ocean Noir from Monteverde ink. So we're, we're done with the black inks. It's a fine nib. So we'll do a little F for fine. I sketch with this all the time and once we're doing colors I'm going to go ahead and do that which shows you how wet that it writes. So if I write right away and then I smudge it you'll see how quickly it smudges. So you do have to let these dry a little bit. To me it's well worth it because they're just so delicious to write with. So I love this and this one lives in my purse as well along with this one and those are my two pens that I just have with me at all times. This is my next Moon Man. This one is, and by the way, I got this one on eBay, but it is also on Amazon. This one I also got on eBay. It's called the Moon Man M8 Pink Flower, and you can see why it's called the Pink Flower. It has these gorgeous pink flowers. It's supposed to mimic the look of Urushi, which is a certain Japanese technique on really expensive pens. And then if you see these little flecks that sort of, um, let me see if this helps, change color with the light. That's supposed to mimic, Al what is it called? Alba, oh Lord, I'm gonna put it on the screen. I think it's abalone is what it's called, but it, ooh, Lord, do you see how many pens I'm dropping? Fountain pen aficionados watching this are cringing because you're not supposed to drop your fountain pens. See that, how pretty? 
So they had a lot of even prettier styles than this, but this is the only one that wasn't like selling out. And I do really think it's pretty, so I was happy to get that. And what I did with this, I didn't like the nib that it came with. So I ordered a Jowo or Jovo nib in a 1.5 stub. So do you see how that's like a flat instead of a ball at the end? That's a stub nib. The nib itself was more expensive than the pen. <laughs> but that's the part that you're experiencing the writing with. So this is a Moon Man. Look at that. M8 pink flower with a 1.5 stub and I'm gonna have to move down here for this because this is a nice thick line this is my brandy dazzle ink that I got in my no budget art haul for my 40th birthday I found this brandy dazzle ink it's stunning you'll see when it dries but I like to put fun inks in this because it's such a nice big fat nib and it just shows off whatever ink you put in there. It's so much fun. This is yet another Moon Man. This one is a Moon Man M2, and it's a demonstrator, which means it's this style where you can see right through it. It is so cool. Another Peter Draws one that I saw on his channel, and I love his video on this. I, I've rewatched it a bunch of times, and this is such a fun pen to write with. I'm so sorry that it's almost out of ink, but this is one of my journalers that I'm just almost done with. This is another one where I ordered a different nib. The nib was actually fine, but I wanted a stub and I wanted to try the Goulet Pens stub. Goulet Pens is a family-run company and I really love ordering from them. And this this stub nib is just beautiful. I highly recommend the Goulet Pens nibs. They're really well done. So this is a Moon Man. Oh my God, look at that ink come out. Oh, I'm sure you can't see how beautiful it is like I can, but we'll do a close up later. M2 with a 1.1, sorry, not a 1.5, this is a 1.1 stub. It's a super juicy writer. Look how beautiful. OMG. Oh my gosh. Guys, I love fountain pens. I love them. That ink is, I believe, the California Teal from Monteverde. And it sheens red. It's so pretty. And it, this pen was also under, it was like around $20. And I got it on Amazon. Again, will be linked below. And this one isn't full at all. It's another demonstrator. I actually uh, need to clean that a little bit better. But this is another demonstrator from Moon Man. This one I also got based on Peter Draw's channel. It's a C1, I believe. Moon Man C1. I will have it linked properly below. I don't have it full right now, but this was meant to mimic the Opus 88, I'm pretty sure, this style. The Opus 88 is an extremely expensive pen. This one was under $20. And it just feels really good. It, it writes beautifully. I do want to replace the nib, though, like I did with two of the other Moon Man pens, because I don't like the nib, actually, that came on this one. But the pen itself is so beautiful and so much cheaper than the Opus 88 demonstrator. And the nice thing about this is you just fill this whole body with ink. You can put like three mil of ink in this. This is one of my, this is one of my absolute favorite pens. Um, I would say this is in my top three, and it's one of the most affordable pens that I have. This is the Moon Man T1. It, this is the green. I also have it in gray here, and I'm going to show you both. But they just feel, and you can kind of hear that. That's the metal against metal. This part is a really nice feeling metal. It just feels amazing, and it looks beautiful. I love this color. I tend to fill this one with teals and blues, and I like to fill this one with purples. The gray one. I just think it looks really pretty with my purple inks. And I keep these full all the time and I use them for work. They're both medium nib. So let me show you this one. This one has Sailor Shikiori Yamadori in it, which is a beautiful shading bluish green. Sorry, I'm so shaky. I'm holding the camera and the book, which maybe wasn't a great idea. <laughs> oh, 
This is the gray one with some purple ink in it. Ooh, look how that writes. It's just like so smooth as butter. I love these medium nibs. To me, these mediums write more like bold or broad. But you'll see in a second, that's just an extremely wet purple. That's one of the reasons it writes so beautifully. Here, let's give you the, this direct sun. Look at that. So pretty. Oh my gosh. Oh, love those. This one sheen's green. That's the um, cross violet. Let's do the loose ones in the case. <laughs> first loose one in the case. One of my first fountain pens. This is the Metropolitan from Pilot. The Pilot Metropolitan. It comes in a bunch of colors. My parents got me the gold one. So this is actually the first one I wrote with. And it is beautiful. I got it in a 1.0 stub. So this is my smallest stub nib. So we have the Pilot Metropolitan 1.0 stub nib. And it's not that wet of a writer. And it doesn't bleed through regular paper, which is one of the reasons I really like this. The journal that we keep together is a really super thin paper. It's just regular old notebook paper. And this holds up much better than these other ones. So that's why I tend to use this one. And I can use a lot of different color inks in here. And it's really fun to use for journaling. It was under 15. It's an, it's an entry level fountain pen. And it comes, the medium is really beautiful too. The gold one I have is in a medium nib. This is the 1.0 stub, which is my favorite, but the medium was beautiful too. It's just these medium nibs are the most wonderful medium nibs ever. These Moon Man T1 medium nibs I'm obsessed with. So nothing really held a candle. This is my first Noodler's Ahab. The funny thing, and I'm going to link Peter Draw's video below, but the funny thing about the noodlers is it's stinky when you get it. Oh, <clears throat> it's like, <clears throat> like belly button smelling is how I would explain it. <laughs> if you put your nose right on it, it still smells. But if you, when you get them, you wash them with soap, every piece. So like you open the whole shebang, you open everything and you take the cartridge out and you fill it all with soapy water, and then I put it overnight in a bag of baking powder or baking soda, baking soda. And so that's what makes it smell actually lovely there ever after. But it requires a little bit of maintenance, this pen, and I kind of like that it's a little persnickety. All three of these pens have the exact same flex nib. This one isn't full of ink, so I'm not gonna demo that one. They're all exactly the same. And this one does have ink, so I'll show this to you first. So this is the, and I'm actually going to give you a close-up for this. Then this is the first flex nib you're going to see. I literally can't write with this in anything but script. I just can't bring myself to do it. This is actually my current journaling pen in this journal, so I'm going to leave it out. But you can see it's just a beautiful line that it creates. Let me Look how different that line is, the flex nib line versus all the other types of lines. It's super interesting. So I highly recommend you try one of each of these, like a medium, a flex, a small stub, a kind of intermediate stub, a giant fat stub a bent nib, a fine nib for sketching. I love fountain pens, so I love having something for everything. But that's what the Ahab Flex Pen looks like, and that's the reason it's called a flex is because the nib has this super long slit down the middle, all the way down from the, from the base of the nib to the tip, and it literally flexes, like it opens. Do you see how it, it opens like a fishtail? 
that's a flex nib. It is so cool. If you try to do that to any other type of pen nib, you break the nib. <laughs> so it's just a really fun nib to play with. So yes, I have three of these. Um, this one has the Rocky Mountain Blue from Colorverse in it. It's a really beautiful blue. And I, the, all three of them are the same exact nib, so they all write the same. I don't want to fill the other two just to do a writing sample when they're literally going to look just like that. <laughs> the next one is a Lamy Safari, and it's actually my only Lamy Safari. This one is a beautiful green color. It's called Petrol. It was a really in high demand. I had to find it on eBay. And Lamy Safaris are just a classic one for new um, fountain pen people. It's another sort of entry level fountain pen. It has this really easy to use click off cap instead of the usual twist on caps. That it has this uh, grip that teaches you how to grip your fountain pen with this grip. And the nibs are really cool and interchangeable. This one is a broad nib. That's my favorite, but it came with an extra fine, I believe. And I bought this broad nib on Goulet pens as well. They sell Lamy nibs also. So this is my Lamy Safari Petrol. And this one has New York Green in it from Colorverse. Both of these inks were a gift from my very, very sweet, wonderful mother-in-law, and I love them. They're beautiful wet writers, as you can see. Both shade beautifully in these pens. They're just really fun and delicious to write with, these pens with these inks. I have a lot of Twisbees. Twisbee is the brand. This is a Twisbee Go. This one is $18, I believe. It's a really nice entry-level fountain pen, but I also just love it even though... I'm not so entry level anymore. I love this pen. It's so much fun. It's so much fun to fill. They're so affordable. Again, a click off cap instead of a twist off cap. It's see through. This one's called Smoke. So you can see the mechanism inside. And you fill it by pushing this down. You push this spring down. And when it pops back up, this little ink area fills in all the way. So you can see I've been using this because it's almost used up. But normally this whole area fills with ink. And you just twist that back on. And you've got your pen. This one's a broad nib. The other Twisbees I have are 1.1 stub nibs. But the broad nib is very pretty. So here, and I'm just going to leave the lighting how it is. My window's open. I hope that doesn't annoy you that there's like different lighting going on. Um, but this is a Twisby. Look at that. Look at the wetness. Can you see that? Look how much ink came out. Holy smokes. I love this pen. Okay. So it's a super wet writer. Twisby Go Broad Nib. And I believe this is the Blue Suede. The Private Reserve Blue Suede is the ink. And man, is this a wet writer my finger's going to be <laughs> soaking with ink from that little demo. But yeah, it also has this funny little like um, lanyard where you can put a lanyard on it and clip it to stuff. So I really like that one. Again, $18. I got this Twisby Eco. This is like the next step up. This one's about $30, just over $30. It has that demonstrator inside. If you paid attention to this, you'll see like that is a very similar look to my Moon Man pen. This is about $10 cheaper, and I do love it. This one's a lot lighter because it's all, this is metal, but it, the rest of it's all plastic. So it's lighter, but I like the metal of this. I just love them both. So this is the white one. I also have the black one. They're both, again, this is a twist off. This is called a piston filler. Same as the T1. So this is the Twisby Oh Eco 1.1 Stub. That is a beautiful wet line. See how wet that is? Woo! Beautiful! And I believe that ink might be the Holly. It's a Dye Mine Ink Vent Specialty Ink 
for Christmas, but I got it for my birthday, which is right around Christmas. This is the black version of that same pen. And actually, because it's not full, I can show you what I mean. See how it's up here? You twist it like that and see how the piston comes up. So if this was in an inkwell, it would be filling with ink when I go this way. The It sucks the ink up into the pen when you do that. So I left it like this so it's ready to fill. So those are my two Twisby Ecos. They're beautiful. I like the black and white. I also loved the rose gold. And there are a lot of colors that I love. They come in a bunch of different colors. But I, I, don't, I actually don't want to become a collector. You might not believe that with everything you're seeing here, but I'm not trying to collect these. I just got the ones that I absolutely loved and felt like looked different enough. I don't know. It would be real easy to become a collector. Honestly, having this case is the saving grace because it limits how much space I have. Next up is this Trammel demonstrator. This is another one that's sort of meant to mimic the Opus 88, which is a like a hundred dollar pen. This is a beautiful. I was shocked with this pen, how pretty it is. I love this sort of ice finish, frosted ice finish compared to the C1 from Moon Man, which is completely clear. I actually like the Trammel better. And again, I didn't love, these are cheap pens. I got this on eBay for maybe $15 and it didn't have the best nib. So I went ahead and got another Goulet stub. Love these. And so this is the Tremel Matte is what it's called with a 1.1 Goulet stub nib. And this has one of my favorite inks in there. <laughs> um, it interacted with the ink above in a cool way. Uh, this has the Copper Noir from Monteverde, which is one of my absolute favorite can't live without inks. Love it. And see what I mean by you can fill the whole body with ink? You just can just leave so much ink in there. It's stinking crazy. Next up, we're into the Monteverdes. And yes, in between the last recording, I did and add a Band-Aid. It's been a while since I had Band-Aid hands. Thought I'd bring you back to a classic. So <laughs> this is Monteverde. The other two that I have... The other two Monteverde pens are both Monteverde Ritmas. They're just really beautiful metal pens. They feel really good. This one is a Monteverde MVP, and it's a, another pocket pen, another little tiny pen. So let's start with this one. I only have one of these. And this is like an ice block, I think is what it was called, or ice chip or something. And it's another one just like that Moon Man Mini where you just screw it into the cap and it becomes a full size, very comfortable pen. This one is a stub, and I believe it's a 1.1 or a 1.0. It just says stub. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's a 1.1. But this is the Monteverde. Ooh, it's really nice. MVP 1.1. I believe it is. I don't think they make 1.0. And this has a mix ink. So it's actually a mix of a blue ink and a pink ink to make this really pretty purple. And I would say this is sort of a just right wetness writer, much like that Metropolitan, the Pilot Metropolitan, this would be great for writing on regular paper. You don't need special fountain pen paper for this. It's not that wet that you would need that. That's what it looks like. First up is this purple Monteverde Ritma, and it has this really satisfying cap. They both do. Do you hear that? It's like it takes barely any effort, and you just kind of touch it, and it magnetically reattaches so it's, it's that snap off snap on and this one is the omniflex so it's trying to compete with the noodlers ahab as a flex pen and you see the sort of fins in the nib that's what gives it the flex so that it won't break instead of being split all the way down the middle that's their solution to that so let's take a peek monteverde ritma Omniflex. It is not nearly as flexible as the Noodlers, and you can tell. Oh, 
Did you see that? I just filled this. <laughs> That's really funny. It kind of exploded. Very wet. Wow. See that? Look how wet that writer is. Wow, 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 wow. But yeah, it kind of exploded when I first pressed down to flex it out. So the flex was a little rusty. This one is the Olive, it was like a special edition, Olive Ritma, same mechanism. This one has the broad nib, classic. Classic Maggie with the broad nib. It is a super duper smooth broad nib. It writes absolutely beautifully. It is delicious. I definitely like the broad better than the Omniflex. I prefer the Ahab if I'm doing a flex nib. And just so you can compare, that's what the two different Ritmas look like. I'm like hoping it's not Ritmo with an O. <laughs> My memory is these are Ritmas with an A, but it'll be linked below. Just another little roll through the ones that we've done so far. Next up is my absolute fanciest pen. This is the Platinum 3776 Nice in Lilas, L-I-L-A-S. <laughs> and it's just this beautiful bright pink. I was really torn between this and the Lavende or Lavender basically. I was drawn in by the lavender, but this was just so bright and happy, it won me over. And this is in a broad nib. It is a gold nib. It's my only 14 karat gold, any kind of gold, but for this one's 14 karat gold nib. It has a little heart. See the heart shaped? I can't remember what that's called. It's like a vent or something. It's the end of the split in the nib that allows the ink to flow. So this is the platinum. 3776 Lilas. It's a niece. Okay, the problem is every time I fill this, I just want to write with it. So I'm going to have to now, now that I filled this just for this video, I'm going to have to bring it downstairs and use it for journaling. It's just beautiful. It's so pretty. And this is the Bougainvillea ink from Diamine. It's like a $4 ink in a, don't tell anyone, but it's a $200 pen. It's like a super expensive pen. I don't even know. I, I just wanted to try a super expensive pen and see what all the hoopla is about. I will tell you, I'm really glad I got it. I love this pen. I use it all the time. Do you need a $200 pen? No, I don't care what anyone says in my experience so far. It's not different enough to justify that. These, a lot of these cheaper pens are just totally stunning and beautiful and I just don't know why you need to jump to something like that. I, I don't know. I don't have a reason. So if you can't get a reason, I wouldn't do it. We are down to the last four pens, and they are all my Caveco Sport pens. So these are all pocket pens. You can probably tell by now I have a love for pocket pens. They all have the exact same feel. They all feel extremely light. If you've never held one of these, um you gotta just trust me there's light as a feather you feel like you could just hold them in in one hand like in one finger basically is how it feels but they're all these caveco collections it's a german brand so the w is pronounced with a v but basically one has the gold and one has the silver writing so gorgeous i got my favorite color palette basically and this makes me feel, something about this color palette makes me feel extremely fancy. This feels, the color palette feels fancier, even though these are also entry-level pens. They're 30-ish dollars. Makes me feel fancier than my super expensive platinum pen. Um, so that should tell you something. <laughs> it's just such a fancy, beautiful, sophisticated, I guess, is the word. When something is sophisticated, that's like the person I'd like to be and am not. And I sometimes buy clothes with that in mind and I never wear them because it's just not me. But I love these pens and this is something where I can be fancy and sophisticated even if I don't feel like I really am. So these have 
the gold on the top or the silver on the top, depending on which collection they are. And that's just how those work. So I got a bunch of different types of nibs with these. This olive one, this is my newest one. This just came out, this olive color. And I just think it's beautiful. So you unscrew the cap and you put it on the back like with all the, it's called posting, you post the cap. And this one's a medium nib. So let's actually try this one. This has one of my favorite inks in it. So you just screw it back on. And this one has the Alt Goldgrum. So it is a German ink with a German pen. So all of these just have different nibs. This is the Evergreen. This is the first one that I saw in the first Caveco that I ordered. And this one has a double broad nib. So as you can imagine, it writes like a stinking Sharpie. I love it. <laughs> so I don't know if this has ink. Let's find out. It does. This has the Colorverse Delaware, State of Delaware, that I got for my birthday. This is the Macchiato. That's the color of this. So fancy. And this is the only one. No, the Fox one here also has silver on it. So I have two silver, two gold. And this one, this is black instead of the Macchiato color because I actually ordered a calligraphy nib so that I could try the stub. So that's the 1.1 stub. And last but not least is the Fox. This one has a regular broad nib. So let's take a look. Oh, sorry. So that's the last one, and I actually have Krishna Goldfish Gold in this one. I do like to try to match my inks to the pens I usually have in the Macchiato Brandy Dazzle or Copper Noir, something like that. So that is my entire fountain pen collection. Let me know in the comments below if you think that there are any that you would be particularly interested in trying or getting for yourself. If there are any that you don't understand why I have it and you don't like it, <laughs> any that you have any kind of a strong opinion on, these are all beautiful and wonderful. The fact that they're still with me means I do really love them. The only one that was on the line is the only one that you don't see here swatched, the C1, because I didn't even dip it to write it because I just don't like that nib. And honestly, I've heard that the nibs for the Moon Man pens are a little bit hit or miss, and they usually come with more than one nib. And I, that's the only one where neither of the nibs were good for me. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video about all of my fountain pens. <laughs> and if you did, remember to leave a like, a comment below, and check if you're subscribed. If you're not, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel for more fun art content. Until next time, remember... Create something cute. You squish your face. You squish your little face. You're very tiny.